Hello, everybody, everybody. Facebook, YouTube, social media, wherever you are. This is the church here that sits on Fernland Road in Irvington. That's the big spotlight that comes on at night. But this is the lovely church that sits right here in this very remote area. And at nighttime, it is very isolated. It sits here alone in the dark. And this light here casts a deep shadow behind it. A wonderful spotlight, but it gives, as you can see, the churches sit here abandoned, all grown up, and what have you. And this is the way Joseph Giles came into this churchyard. And I'm going to take you around the church that you may see that that low down sheriff deputy Joseph McGuire with his pet itself. I won't have Taylor that's over law enforcement in the state of Alabama. I want him to see this. I want Governor K. Ivy to see this. Because I'm sure the insiders in Mobile will hide this major cover-up. It is all wooded. And to awaken back here in a car, in a truck, behind this church, it was a very frightening experience. And I was a victim in this situation. I had no cause to think that a burglary or anything law breaking was afoot because Joseph Giles had worked with me in a lot of situations like this. This little road here, back here this little road comes right behind the church and here's the door where I entry. And to receive a big organ, this is where I woke up, not knowing nothing. Back here behind this church, even in the daytime, if I wanted to do something uh, evil, the way this church sits right here behind this wooded area right here, where these woods behind it, I didn't know what was what the left from right or anything but this is the door and as you can see there that door is very compromised and this is what uh the past tenant i'm told who is uh bishop edgar holmes senior made Joseph Giles aware of how to enter the church. And, and as you can see, just that little road behind the church is, uh, and as you can see that door, this is my first time seeing it, but I had to come because this was a detective job. It was a detective job to follow up, to look at what I was saying. It was Massa Detective Joseph Joey McGuire's job to do a thorough investigation. But he chose rather to charge me with this crime. And I'm not gonna let it sit. I won't have Taylor to know how petty the officers are here in Theodore and perhaps how uh, the hierarchy here will work and labor to 
cover up the dirty deeds that Master Joe did. He seemed to not be able to handle a, a, a black man with authority or, or, or power. What I did, I was to be commended. And it's a sad shame here in Alabama that a pastor would uh, tell of a crime once he found out that he was a victim of being brought not of his own will to this location here and this organ was removed out of this church and uh but he opted he opted to charge me with it and that is so low down it is so dirty it is a shame that you have something here called crime stoppers that a citizen would report a crime i don't know if You'll be able to see into this church, but you can see me, perhaps, my reflection on the door coming, yeah, my reflection there. And if, if you can see through this window, I'm not sure, but there, the organ sits. And uh, just a, a regular friendly community, they don't, you don't have to fear nothing uh happening in a place you know at you know at home friendly people and uh they don't lock the church and i understand you know everything can be seen because in the old days the church didn't have to be locked anybody could go in the church to pray I'm 52 years a preacher, 52, and now I have a burglary charge attached to my name. So if I ever was invited to the governor's mansion, to the White House, if I ever had to stand for something uh, against Rome, I would be compromised because Master Joseph Maguire, instead of coming out here doing detective work and making sure what I said is as I said it, he rather just be lazy and a Ku Klux Klan and, and, and put it to me. Who does that? Who does that? And the citizens of Mobile need to know that we've elected these kind of people here on the Gulf Coast. Who's, whoever is hiding this, this need to be their last year in service. I didn't ask to get involved with this. I'm, the, I'm a victim, as well as a member of this church. I'm a victim. I was brought here. I didn't ask to come. I was brought because I was riding with the owner of the funeral home. Not Carl Malone, he's one of the owners, but I was with Joseph Giles. Both of them are said to be pastors, but from what I understand, the, the drum set that belongs to this church is in the funeral home too. Nice, wonderful church. One, this is my third time here. I came before and took pictures outside. Did not think in my first mind to record this to show, but I want the citizens of Alabama, I want the pastors that that are in covenant with me to see this. Because what this man wanted to do, he wanted to taint my name because he had talked to a bunch of enemies of mine. And what he wanted to do, and he didn't mind, was do a crime and have me along with him entrap me. Now I'm a victim of circumstances, but it reflects and look like I willfully, willingly got in the car and came out here in the truck rather, but he was charged only with receiving 
stolen goods. I'm charged with the burglary. He's not charged with going in this church. He's the one that was in it. I was so fearful that night that the police would come out here and I'd be shot. I didn't think it was nothing wrong. No, I did not. But I know it's hunt season for black people all over the world. And these rogue cops will use any kind of excuse to shoot a black man and say, oops. And a 12 panel jury is known for letting them off after they do a heinous crime. And after some family has uh, lost their loved one and some innocent victim has lost their life. Now it's oops and we got to bury our loved one. I didn't want to be a victim of that. So to awaken here in the dark, here we are. And here's where the truck sat. And I was sick. I was sick because I have intestinal issues and I was very ill. And I needed to go and I wanted to rush him so we could go. But when I come to find out, he was inside inside of this building removing the organ and i need you all to see i need the public to see where could i have gone i don't know nobody around here it's dark this church sits alone here i'm going out and walk out here to this field to the side of it this nice church nice wonderful facility i wouldn't have it be said that I'm stealing, breaking in somebody's church and stealing the organ. I don't like no nobody well enough to steal. Steal if 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 I was a rogue, I wouldn't be stealing for nobody else. If I stole something, I steal it alone by myself. Ain't nobody gonna be able to say I did it with them. No, I live for Fallout Day. I live for the day when we ain't no more longer friends, and you ain't gonna be able to put my name in uh in nothing. So if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it by my one self. But I'm, I'm definitely not going to do it for him. I was uh, playing at his funeral home. I was his public relations director. And because I declined and he knew that I was going to soon not do that anymore, I brought Ed Manasseh to him, uh, a, 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 a crack addict. Well, not, it's Mojo, I'm told, whatever that is. He's heavy on that. And uh, let him play for this funeral home. Let him, let, I mean, for, yeah, yeah, for your funeral home. He having church in the Sunday mornings and uh, in the chapel. And after, after uh, Edgar Holmes left here, his congregation and him started having funerals in the funeral home with the organ stolen out of this ch church, allegedly having church in the funeral home. I don't know whether Joe, well, whether he was doing that or not, uh, Edgar Holmes, but I do know he pastored this church. I never came there while he pastored. I don't know nothing about this church. I don't even know the name of it. I just found out who owns it. And here it is. The organ sits in there now. From what I can tell, it looked like maybe the back is off of it because Joseph John so evil, he wouldn't uh, give these people back an organ that's working. I'm told, allegedly, that the organ is in disrepair now and he tore it up before he gave it up. And who's behind this is Joseph Maguire. And that's a shame. He needs to be fired. And if he think he's going to rest, if he think he's going to rest and have this attached to my name, he got another thought coming. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't seek a relationship with him, but all Ku Klux Klan's like him need to be pulled out of the darkness. They throw the rock and they hide their hand. And Paul Birch attached his name to this. So this was the crime that I was arrested for October the 3rd of 2019. 
This was the crime. But that same date, the owner of this church, who's now deceased, he and his wife came to the sheriff department in, uh, in Theodore to tell him, do not bother Bishop Allen. He is our friend. You all did nothing to help me. But when he found out this crime had happened, he told us about it. He told, and that I did. And it's a sad shame that this racist uh, white supremacist, who would do that? I don't know no police that a pastor would report a crime and he's so petty as to find probable cause to the microscopic degree just to hide his dirty hands and then have his colleagues get into it with him. I want, I want you to see this. This is where I was, Mobile. This is where I was. This is where I wake up to in the middle of the night. And I'm on, I was only arrested because I reported this crime. Nobody reported it but me. I called, find out who owned this church. I called them. Once I called the owner's daughter, she connected her father in, the late Mr. Joe Mo, and he was just overjoyed that I was a good Samaritan, righteous enough to let him know who stole it and work with him to the point of getting their organ back, working with the law enforcers, that they would arrest the person that stole it, but these evil, low-down bastards charge me with this organ. And if they think they're going to rest, they got another thought coming. They're not going to hide. I'm going to make the world know what's going on down here in Alabama. I'm out here in the county. I called my sister that works right there at Broad and Virginia Street, diagonal to uh, the renowned Pullman's Bakery, right across from Christ Temple Apostolic Church. I called, but she said it couldn't be reported there. It had to be reported out here in the county. Me, this being my one, two, one, two, three. My third time here since the first time I came when the crime happened. Where can I go to? Where can I run? What am I going to do out here? I don't know nothing is going on. I don't even know it's a crime. Joseph Giles didn't spend all of his time being the devil and doing heinous stuff. He helped me do things that I couldn't have done had it not been for him. He knew I was sick. Him and a fellow employee, uh, William Wiggins, uh, went out on 158 to that church and helped me got the organs. They, they many times would push me out the way because I was more in the way than uh, being a, a, an assistance per se. But uh, Gulf Coast, or wherever you are around the world, wherever you are, I need you to get involved. I need you to get involved. This is, this is a shame. Oops, I saw my hand that got in front of this of the camera. Pardon me there, but I'm Bishop Allen. I was charged for breaking in this church, burglary, saying I went into this church with intent. He knew he had something that he couldn't prove, but that low down bastard did it just to have something attached to my name. The judge threw this out. Instead of him charging me for the harassment charge and this charge on October the 9th, 2019, what he did, he split the charges. He sent the owner away, telling the owner, well, he's in for something else. He's not here about the organ, but this don't have nothing to do with that. So when I talked to Mr. Moore later, he said he sent him away. He told me that he did. That's why I want you to get the video. And it's a shame that we black folks, we will turn on each other after we know each other for years or whatever. We'll turn on one another behind this lie. This is a sophisticated, systemic racism, systemic 
prejudice and injustice and he would attach it to my name. But let me tell you this. I don't care what nobody say. This is my name. That cracker came after me. Now I'm after him. We stuck together now. I need I need everybody to know that. And I need uh, CBS, ABC, NBC, Fox, and everybody. I need OWNS. Uh, every investigate inside edition. I need every investigative reporter on YouTube to get behind this because I need to know. I need you to understand that Mobile is smiling, but Mobile got more shit in his closet than a little bit. And I want you to see how evil these people is down here, Mobile. I'm not trying to hide it. I'm not trying to be cute. I supposed to be a preacher? No, I am for 52 years. But I'm fed up. I went through this mess by myself. Uh, my friends started acting funny. Now the, I got enough relatives to fill up the Superdome. Preachers and deacons and, and what have you. And, and I was in the courthouse by myself facing this madness that I had nothing to do with. Now, I... That bastard is not going to hide. That bastard is not going to hide behind Paul Birch. I'm going to pull his white ass clean out of the closet, and I'm going to make the world know what he did. I mean what I'm saying, and I'm saying what I mean, and I mean it in Jesus' name. You're not going to do this to me. You're not going to do this to my mother. She struggled to raise up nine children, and I'm, one, I'm, I'm next to the baby. And here it is that you're going to come put some mess like this on me. Lie on me if you will. But to go as far as you did, you crossed the damn line. And I want you to know that I'm going to make Mobile understand, the world understand, who you are, what you're all about. Because a simple investigation would have, would have covered this. Would have, you brought your behind out here and looked and saw everything I was telling you. But you wanted to because I called you a liar. You said that Augur went in the funeral home and it was there. So I took a picture beside it because I know how crooked y'all is. I know how evil and wicked you can be. And I wasn't going to let you play that on my turf. And you wanted to tell Joseph Giles about it so he can get it out there because y'all don't like Joe Mo, Joe Mo, Mr. Joe Mo. And, and, and I, could, I could see that. And you made Anthony tell that lie. But let me tell you this. I got a dick to play with. I done had it. For 60 some years. But y'all old punk uh, slave masters sleeping with the big buck mandingos. And y'all like that old freaking mess. And you know how divided and low down the church is in a many ways. And that white supremacist that's being preached to there. So you figured if you get that mess attached to my name. But I've had a dick for 60 some years. And I'm too busy playing with it to be playing with an idiot's dick. So stupid self, dumb bastard. You ain't going to rest. I ain't, I'm not going to have it. You're not, you're not going to, I'm mad. This is my name. And all I did, I just passed a funeral home out here in Grand Bay coming here that I'm saying it. Helping folks, volunteered. And everybody ought to be as mad as I am. You should be as livid as I am. This is wrong. And if you too saved to understand, you need to get off my page. Because I ain't got time for this foolishness. I ain't got time for this foolishness. This is my name. And it, 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 it's, it's not going to be, I need a lawyer. I need you lawyers that's not afraid of Mobile County Police Department. That's not afraid of Mobile, of Mobile Police Department or Mobile County Sheriff Department to get with me. And let's take this on. But I'm going to make everybody know it. I'm going to email everybody. I'm going to fly to where everybody is. My, my, my station has changed. Now I'm in full blast exposure mode to expose Joseph Maguire and his buddies that hide his shit. They're as culpable as he is. You all supposed to be the law. You're supposed to be the Jess. It's supposed to be no respect of person. But every time I look at first 48, 
I see shit that y'all let pass and, and go whatever. And here you're going to do something petty when you should be shaking my hand, celebrating me and giving me a certificate for being a good Samaritan reporting this mess. And you're going to put it on me? You're going to put it on me? Well, baby, you got me. You came for me. You got me. And it's on. And this ain't going to stand. It's on. I want you to know that. And by the law, by the law, I'm going to do everything possible by the law. I need Sandy Stimson to understand. Yes, I done sang before you, uh, sir, your honor, and I appreciate it. Everybody on the city council, uh, all the city council members are my friend. But I didn't need this. If y'all could sit there and let this mess stick because you're afraid you're going to lose some money because of the, his recklessness, you need to lose money. You need this mess like this shouldn't be covered up. This is wrong. This is wrong. And I'm going to go to all the pastors here in Alabama, on the Gulf Coast, I'm a, all of them, they're my colleagues. And I want them to know that this would happen to you if you report crime here in Alabama, Mobile in particular, because that's what I did. That's all I did. And this happens as a result of it. So look at the situation. At night, this place is very dark. I didn't know what was going to happen to me. Yeah, the judge threw it out, but it's still sitting on my name. And so what he did, so at the same time, the same October the 9th, six days before then, Anthony was asking me to come to Mobile to, so he could drive me around and we rehearse and we do things practicing in the funeral home, him beating the drums and all this, all the text messages. So he don't show up for court. And then that's going to be, oh no, I want my name cleared. I ain't going to, you know, you ain't going to, no, I don't need no clever bullshit. I was ready to fight it. I was ready to fight it in Jesus name. In Jesus name. I'm saying what I'm saying because I'm mad as hell. And I promise you, I'm going to expose that white cracker. He ain't gonna do this. He no, and 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 he, and he brought it to the right person. He brought it to the right person, and I know that you all have tried to deflect. Say, listen, Danny, he's supposed to be a preacher. He's saying, he's saying, damn, he's saying shit, and he's saying bastard. I got a lot of more things to say because he's all of that. He's all of that and a whole lot more. But y'all sit there, have not done nothing, has not questioned this. All of you know me. You can call and say, Bishop Allen, what's going on? What's happening? What ha it, when you when you when you are not part of the solution, you are part of the problem. And I'm not gonna have this attached to my name. So if this got to go down like Michael Donald hanging and the trial of the Ku Klux Klan, however that is, if he has to go down and we got to make history mobile for this bullshit that's unnecessary, then so be it. But I promise you. This ain't gonna be attached to my name. And I'm saved and I'm sanctified. I'm a holy, I'm a holy this preacher. But everything got his a breaking point. Jesus breaking point on the cross said, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? John breaking point in jail. Let's go ask Jesus, he the one or should we look for another? Everything got a breaking point. Jeremiah saying ain't gonna speak on your name anymore. Your word is derision to me. You mighty than I. Everything got a breaking point. And this comes a time. That we got to, he told me to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. A serpent is not meek and a dove is not wicked. So I got to know when to be which one at the same time in the same person. So don't tell me about Bill and Sweet coming out the same fountain. I read my whole Bible. I ain't got no pet scriptures. And I ain't putting up with this mess. It ain't going to be attached to my name. And whatever I got to do to expose it, then so be it. I was minding my own business, preaching the gospel and helping people. I ain't asking my family for nothing. And I ain't asking, I, I'm not, if you, especially you wicked, evil, low down demons that would, would even take that mess and spread it through your page, you a freak yourself. I got a dick to play with. Been playing with it 60 years. Tell me about some retarded nigga. He, he, he put it together like that. 
He wanted it to go like that. Now that nigga was arrested the other day, Wednesday, the 17th. No driver's license, receiving stolen goods, and all other kind of mess. And you know what they put in there? They put his picture. They said, well, he's retarded, and we can't give him a mugshot. We have to hide his face, because he retarded. Because he retarded. So I'm telling you, this is where we are. I'm going to still preach the gospel. I'm going to still lay hands on the sick. I'm going to still cast out devils. I'm going to still restore sight to the blind in the name of Jesus. But it's come a time when you got to say, hey, cut the shit short now. Enough of the bullshit. I ain't finna play with you. And, I, and I'm not sure. I'm not damn sure I ain't trying to talk sweet to you. If you thought I... Uh, uh, playing with a retarded man's penis, <laughs> you don't think I'm saved no how. So whatever I say, I ain't got nothing to lose from you. So you go to hell. I'm talking to the city mobile and to all that pertain to, to K. Ivy, the governor. I couldn't have been the pastor of College Hill Baptist Church and this happened. I couldn't have been the pastor of Dolphin Way Baptist Church and this happened. Your wicked Ku Klux Klan, your wicked evil white supremacists, you're throwing a rock and hiding your hand, and we got all them prejudiced folk here in the Mobile Police Department and in the Sheriff Department, and then the black uh, co-workers have to sit there and watch this bullshit and can't do nothing because ain't nothing at the top but cutting Lawrence Baptiste just a figurehead. He can't say, that don't sound right. Y'all need to look into that. That don't sound like that man. Of all the years, I done lived all this time, and ain't nobody, did I, did you, oh baby, <laughs> oh baby, you got the right one. You got the right one. And I, and, and I hope a hundred years from now, somebody looking through and say, listen, uh, Apostle Allen, he got mad when them crackers tried to destroy his name and, uh, and, and put that arrest to his charge. And he came for them bastards, calling them bastards. I mean it with everything in me. Oh yeah, this something oh, yeah. could my brothers and sisters shut has shut this down? Yes. Could my daddy has shut this down? Yes. But when they think and see that your family's against you, then that add fuel to the flame. So they can sit right there on the sideline. But me and Jesus gonna fix this mess. Me and Jesus gonna straighten this mess out. Cause it ain't gonna be on my name. And whoever is a time for everything. It is a time to embrace, and there's a time to refrain from embracing. It's a time of war, and there's a time of peace. And this is the time the I'm filled with righteous indignation, and I am livid to an epic degree, and I'm, I, I don't care if he's up in an eagle's ass, I'm going up in there looking for him to pull that cracker out so you can see what's going on. And my friend, my best of friends are white folks. My best of friends. When I saw my school, middle school best friend, Travis Hall, signing on this on the website of WPMI 15. And for you that's looking at this, that don't understand what's going on, I'm Apostle Frederick Allen. Just Google Frederick Allen featured on WPMI 15, or uh, WKRG 5, November the 20th, 2019, you will see this. And what that low down white supremacist did, he attached a heinous, a heinous uh, harassment charge. Then he had the guy face, but he was determined to put this charge on me that day because he had to deflect. And he wanted to take the credit for having found this organ and he didn't find shit. I discovered it. I discovered it because when I heard rumor that Joseph Giles and I stole his organ, I started doing my investigation. The same investigation when I heard that I had ran up my mama's phone bill and everybody was blaming me for it. I'm known to do my private investigations. 
and I started doing my private investigation and didn't tell a soul nothing. I wasn't trying to get the buck off of my hand. Wasn't nothing on my hand. Ain't nothing on my hand now. Only thing on my hand is that crooked liar that I'm going to expose. I'm going to expose Joseph McGuire. I hope somebody arrest me. I hope we go to court. I hope, because I want to get in the courtroom and tell the judge and all the mobile that how evil that bastard is. Y'all done gave that bastard a badge and a gun. And he, how, many, how many people in jail because of him? And this could be anybody. This could be anybody. I didn't do nothing, not one thing to be here. Not shit to be where I am today. And I promise you this, this ain't gonna stand. People stand up when I walk in the room and they sit down when I tell them and pastors don't have no problem sending me whatever honorarium that I say and they treat me well. And you're gonna tell this to my name, but I ain't finna fake with you. I ain't finna fake with nobody. This ain't no new me. No situation called for me to be this mad and this upset and what have you. I'm not, I'm not trying to hear, get the hell out of my way, get off my page, delete yourself. I'm dealing with a situation that I've came to my door. You have not called the city mobile, the sheriff, Sam Cochran. You have not called Chief Lawrence Baptiste saying, I know this man. You didn't call me to see, can I be a, 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 a character witness for you? Do you have your attorney fee? But no, you evil niggas shared that shit and had a barbecue, had a feast. You was rejoicing like they was shouting when Donald Trump lost his second term. And you talking about you on your way to heaven and you want to sit here and point your finger at me down your pompous fire's nose? You go to hell, you wicked. Here it is. And I don't need to come to the Lord. The Lord with me right now. I feel the Holy Ghost right this very second. Ain't no time for that. Ain't, ain't, it, it's, it, it, there's a war going on. And I'm going to fight this shit in the name of Jesus. It's me, myself, and I, and God. And we're going to see I done won those two battles. I won them. And I'm going to win this one. I need a lawyer worth his salt. I need a lawyer anywhere in the world that can, that can, that can uh, do law in the state of Alabama. Any lawyer that could do state. Because the jury going to see how evil this was. And how they tried to hide it, and how they tried to scar my name. I reported this crime once I found out that it was. And I'm telling him, I got my organ for out there. Well, he said he got his organ from out there. So, and it wasn't no rush. The church still here. I'm still here. Joseph Giles still here. All it te all this required was proper police work, proper investigation. But you chose the cheat way out. Okay, it's on.